Are the Straw Hats the weakest Yonko crew ever? Yes, not including Kids and Law's crew, of course. There's nothing to see there besides Killer and Beepo. However, I still believe the Straw Hats are a complete crew and worthy of being called the Pirate King's comrades. Now hear me out before you click off, because I'll give you tangible proof why Oda chose to elect the members as he did, and it has everything to do with Luffy's characteristics. You see, in Blackbeard's crew, they all resonate with his belief and ideal. Kill, cheat, plunder, and win however you can. Whatever you do is justified, as long as you get the loot. But that's not how Luffy operates, is it? No, he is more like Roger and Whitebeard, in a sense where he respects his enemies and treasures his friends. If Blackbeard got the chance to win, he'd step over his subordinates to get it, and they would do the same. In fact, this was one of the tests he gave Katrina during Impel Down. Survival of the fittest, and we've seen this firsthand with Rox D. Zebek's crew. When you fill the ship up with ruthless mercenaries, the only law of the land is domination. This has its benefits, as Rox was able to gather strong warriors in his crew and rival that of the world government and the Pirate King. What do you think Blackbeard is planning, if not gaining control over the world itself? So, you see how fundamentally different Blackbeard and Luffy are, and why their members have no similarities. The reason I mention this is because Blackbeard's crew, while strong, isn't complete. The fact that it doesn't have a fishman or someone who can swim is a huge disadvantage from the get-go. Given the precarious nature of the ocean, your ship could capsize at any moment. Van Auger isn't able to warp them all to safety, or isn't he? Perhaps his awakened form is able to increase the amount of people he teleports simultaneously. Or he might increase the radius the same way Law managed to increase the size of his room, but I digress. So you see how beneficial it is having someone like Jinbei in the crew, right? Someone to save you from drowning and lead your ship to safety. But that's not all Jinbei is good for, is he? I consider him the most underrated Straw Hat member. Think about it. Aside from him, none of the other Straw Hats had actual battle experience or status. And I mean real experience. Grand line tragedies and full-on territorial brawls. Jinbei is a true veteran. People sometimes forget that Jinbei used to be one of the seven warlords. I know, crazy, right? Not only that, but he was also in the cahoots with Big Mom, arguably one of the strongest Yonko to have ever existed. Let's not forget the pure dominance Big Mom and Kaido had prior to Onigashima. These two were set to inherit the One Piece, had it not been for the divine intervention of Nika and Destiny. The only thing that could have defeated these foes was plot. So consider again how prominent Jinbei's addition to the crew was. One thing Luffy lacks now, and which I believe is the final piece of the puzzle, is Yamato, the tenth and final official member, and I'll explain more as to why this is later on. Keep in mind, Luffy's empire will continue to grow. Even as we speak, he has gathered powerful allies after every arc. You see, that's one aspect of Luffy that none of the current pirates have. The trust of the people. Shanks had it. Whitebeard protected it. Kaido abused it, but Luffy accepted it. Blackbeard doesn't want it. He is all about doing things himself. He only sends out his minions when he doesn't want to get his hands dirty, while Luffy will always put himself in danger to save his comrades. But coming back to the concept of trust, Luffy has gained allies ever since the start of the show. Oh, wait, he also has the most enemies. What a pickle he has put himself in. Take a look back and see. He bumped heads with Alvida, ruined Kuro's plan, even though he got Kaya's support, and let's not forget she's loaded. She might come in handy. Then there's Django. I doubt he'd let go of a grudge. But hey, even though Buggy turned on him and tried to kill him, he still managed to escape Impel down alongside him and fight Marineford with him. While I wouldn't say Buggy did a lot of fighting, though, Aokiji made quick work of him. Then there's Chef Zeph and his subordinates, who might march alongside him. However, Don Krieg will definitely thwart his plans, alongside Morgan. Some enemies here and friends there. Luffy and the Straw Hats are seen as both saints and sinners, depending on where you stand. Arlong, for one, would never forgive him, and this could cause a chain of event that leads to the fishmen turning against him. 
If Arlong and Hody Jones made their own crew, similar to Mihawks and Crocodile's Cross Guild, they could form a fan club hating on the Straw Hats, which could cause a problem. Speaking of fan clubs, you do know that there is positive and negative karma, right? What the Straw Hats did in Little Garden, with Dory and Brogy came back in floods during Egghead Island to save them from a buster call. What more could the Straw Hats ask for, huh? Honestly. All they did was stop Mr. Three from causing havoc and gave the Giants faith. Even though Dory and Brogy aren't officially from the Ten crew members, they were ready to march alongside them, and that's what makes the Straw Hats really fearsome. Don't go anywhere, cause things are just getting started. We haven't even used the first gear, let alone the second or third. Aside of the Giants, do you know how valuable Dr. Kureha and Dr. Vegapunk are? Do you? Well, I bet you do since you know the value of knowledge and information. The fact that the Straw Hats know them should have been sufficient to nominate them for the prize, however. The fact that they are good friends with them and have befriended their prodigies speaks volumes. Let me make it clearer for you. Chopper is a medical genius, a once-in-a-lifetime find. The Straw Hats hit the jackpot with finding a brilliant doctor and a master-class chef in of its own. The fact that they can fight and hold their own is but an icing to the cake. And it doesn't end there either. You also have the lone survivor of the O'Hara incident in your crew, and she is the only one who can read poneglyphs. It honestly doesn't get any better than that. You see why I deemed the Straw Hats a complete crew, right? Every great pirate crew needs one swordsman. It's like one of the prerequisites you must obtain to qualify. Swordsmanship is essential in the world of One Piece. Why else do you think characters like Aokiji and Kizaru keep forming swords with their respective element? Even though they don't do it as often, it's a sign of mastery. That's why Zoro is an indispensable member of the crew. He is the Rayleigh to Roger. However, Usopp failed to become the Beckman to Shanks, or the Lucky Rue to Shanks. Having a sharpshooter always comes in handy. You thought I forgot about Yasop, huh? Nah, but I'd personally say he ranks third. Wait a minute. I just realized that Shanks is the only swordsman in the crew. I wonder why he'd choose three sharpshooters as his commanders. Is there something he knows that we don't? None of them have devil fruits either. Perhaps the theory of devil fruit users getting sick on their way to laugh tail might bear some truth. If so, Luffy will have a hard time pushing forward, but not completely impossible, since he'd still have Frankie, Sanji, Zoro, Usopp, and Nami to guide the way. Brooke would keep them busy with his music and jokes, which is able to lift morale and help kill the boredom of sailing the vast seas. Don't get me wrong, Brooke is a powerful combatant through and through. He has proved his worth time and time again. I mean, who else could have stood their ground against Big Mom? That takes real balls to execute. I feel like Oda hasn't shown us Brooke's true potential yet. Even in Wano, he took the back seat and didn't do much. I mean he motivated and saved Robin, but he never fought a Tabi Rapo directly. Even in Egghead he seems to be playing the casual background character, even though at his peak I believe Brooke has the potential to be a remarkable scout. Given his astral projection abilities, he would serve as the straw hat's eyes and ears, gathering classified intel from hush-hush meetings. On top of that, he can work on his ice powers and hope to reach Aokiji's level one day. But that's not all. I believe his greatest weapon is going to be his musical hypnosis. He is yet to unlock its full form, which I believe could be more devastating than Django. Thriller Bark posed an exciting journey in the Straw Hats Crusade. They gained Brook in the process and made enemies of Gecko Moria. However, I still believe it's a win. Prior to Thriller Park, we had Water 7, where they met Frankie. And speaking of Frankie, they landed gold in hiring a skilled master such as him. Frankie might be underutilized now, but you just wait. Soon enough, he'll be making cyborgs as big and powerful as Dr. Vegapunk's. That is his fullest potential. He isn't just a shipwright, but a bona fide creator as well. Imagine Frankie at the final stages of the war, dropping down with the strongest Iron Man suit you can imagine, simply spamming rockets and cannons and lasers like the pacifista, I believe we are greatly underestimating his potential. I believe he might go against Jesus Burgess in the end, given that they both rely on strength and power. Would be an interesting match up to witness, wouldn't you say? 
While we are on the topic of allies and enemies of the Straw Hats, there is one individual the Straw Hats should look out for. If this man decided to seek vengeance, they would have a tough battle on their hands. And yes, this man is Anel, the self-proclaimed deity of Skypea. I know the Straw Hats gathered a few allies while they were there, but they all fall victim to the wrath of this lightning freak. If he decides to show up late into the game after having powered up, this would cause a significant threat to the Straw Hats. Be that as it may, this time around, I have this feeling that Nami would take care of it. You're probably laughing at the very thought of this, huh? I wouldn't blame you. But given the addition of Zeus, wouldn't he be the ideal counter against Enel? Correct me if I'm wrong, but Zeus grows stronger after devouring electricity from Nami's climate attack, right? Wouldn't one of Enel's attack be a fulfilling dinner for him? However, I doubt lightning strikes would hurt him, unless they are infused with hockey, of course. We have seen his ability to use hockey firsthand when Nami used him to knock Ulti's lights out. I don't know, man. I sense Oda is cooking something delicious here. The Straw Hats have one of the most talented navigator, Nami, one of the most gifted doctor, Chopper, who, by the way, will turn into an absolute monster once he masters his transformation. We all saw how he made quick work of Queen by toying with him, in addition to finding a cure within hours that would have otherwise wiped the majority of the samurai and their army. None of the other Yonko crews could have done this, in my opinion. Now the real question is, do you think Chopper would create a deadly virus for the final battle? I know he is capable, but it's a matter of ethics, I suppose. Moving on, we have to talk about Robin's evolution. Am I the only one who saw her turn into a devil? An actual demonic entity. Her transformation was more in the lines of Zoan Awakening or Gorosei Aura. Imagine if Robin faced Saturn in her devil form. Man, I'd pay good money to see that battle. What if her evolution into the devil has something to do with the origins of devil fruit and divinity? It could lead us one step forward to finding the secrets of the One Piece. But seriously, aside of Robin, who else can read Pone Glyphs? When Shanks and Blackbeard declared going after the hidden treasure, how were they able to decipher it? That's one more reason why I believe the Straw Hats are the best candidates so far. They have allies from Zhu, Dressrosa, and Wano to back their claim. This means the Samurai and the Minks will march into battle, alongside the fleet led by Bartolomeo, who promised to stand by his side. And there were promising candidates inside. Also, we are yet to see the barrier barrier fruit destroyed. Could it be the perfect defense? Then, let's circle back to why I think Yamato would be the ideal candidate for the Straw Hats. Firstly, she's super hot. What more is there to say? Sanji and Brooke would agree. Secondly, she possesses Zoan devil fruit and has Kaido's blood running in her veins. That, in of itself, should be sufficient, since she is a walking monster who is capable of massive destruction on the final battlefield. I thought of Bonnie joining the crew after the latest manga chapters, and honestly, she is also a worthy candidate. Since she idolized Nika since her childhood, I'm certain she would die before betraying him. Who knows? If Kuma survives, he might join them as well. Also, the fact that the giants showed up implies that Shanks, as always, is on their side. Cause we saw Dory and Brogi a few chapters back when they laid waste to Kid and his ship. They must have gotten orders from him to head there, since knowledge of this incident could have only been conceived from the likes of Yasop or Shanks. Even after all this, half of their true might hasn't showed up yet. Did you guess it by now? Yeah. The Revolutionary Army. They are siding with Luffy, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, the addition of Dragon and Sabo alone would make the Straw Hats untouchable. But adding the entire might of the Revolutionary Army, on top of his Dressrosa fleet, the Samurai, the Minks, the Fishmen who follow Neptune, the Sea Monsters who follow Shirahoshi, the Scipia Army, the Alabasta Soldiers, the Giants and Shanks crew, I'd say they are about ready to invade the world government, wouldn't you say? Oh, and let's not forget, Zoro is going to end up as the King of Hell and more powerful than Odin. Sanji will eventually gain conquers and be as strong as Rayleigh, and Luffy, 
Well, I'm just waiting for Gear 6 to show up and prove everyone why he is who he says he is. The inevitable Pirate King. Well, that's all for now. If you loved our One Piece rant, let us know in the comments, and we'll have more discussions and ideas coming your way. Please leave a like, subscribe, and share this to your One Piece friends.